Hello, this is Jon Kobbel from EMD. In this video, I would like to show you how you can use 3D objects exported from SketchUp uh, and use them in WinPro photo montage. Here I have added a model here of a solar panel in the center of this roundabout. And here you can see the same object just rotated. In SketchUp, you have a, a huge library of uh, free 3D objects you can use. And uh, that's where I found this one. And of course, you can make your own. Uh, you can also use other uh, 3D editors than SketchUp. The important thing is that you should be able to export the objects as uh, DAE files. And then you can attach them to this 3D object here in WinPro and use them for, for something like this. I will show you the whole process here uh, in, in WinPro and I create a pro project from scratch. So if you're not familiar with WinPro and photo montage, then uh, you can see how you do it. Else you can just scroll forward. Okay. I have now just opened WinPro and I want to create a new project. And I have uh, found uh, the area here, right here at the cursor, we have the roundabout where I want to put in the 3D object. So I'm just going to put my uh, project here by double clicking. And I have to give it a file name. And I'm just going to call it PV demo. And here on the other screen, this one pops up. And I can now uh, add a background map. And I want to use, uh, I like to have a dynamic map first here. And I also want one of these VMS maps. We have from, for Denmark, we have some very detailed uh, maps that is available as VMS maps. Here you can see the area uh, in a very uh, high detail level. So this is one tile and I want to download four tiles. I can, at any time I can change the zoom level uh, and the number of tiles from if I want to. Okay, so now I have added these two maps. And you can see the maps down here. I'm going to change to this map here. And um, then I would like to have some elevation data. So I'm just going to rename this layer here to elevation. And then I, I would like to organize my objects in, in layers and I at the elevation data here, I use this object is because uh, I have some gridded elevation data available as online data. And we have a very detailed elevation data for Denmark. I accept this. And I don't need this much, so I'm just going to say one by one kilometer. And then I'm pressing OK. It's a little annoying that these uh, forms pops up outside, but anyway, I'm just pressing OK. Doesn't matter with the, this question. So now I've got the elevation data, and you can see that now when I move the mouse around, it shows the, the elevation of at the where I'm pointing with the mouse. And I don't need to see the elevation data anymore, but now I like to add my camera object. I'm putting that on another layer. And I know that I took the photo from somewhere around here, looking in this direction. So I'm just gonna click on the camera object, put it down here and click again right here. So here's all the stuff about the, uh, the camera and 
one important thing is of course the focal length. I know that the focal length is 23. I know that I took the picture from just around 30 meters height and uh, the position is uh, just approximately. Uh, I didn't use the GPS for the photo uh, in this case, uh, but I'm gonna find out anyway. Here in the background, I select, in the background tab, I select the photo I took. And now it's gonna ask if I want to import the EXIF data, but as you can see here, the EXIF data is is, is crap, so um, I'm not gonna import that. I'm just gonna cancel it. And uh, then on the render settings, render settings tab here, I would like to change the time because it, since there was no EXIF data, it just used uh, what time it is right now, as you can see down here. But I think it was uh, in the afternoon sometime, uh, something like this. It's gonna affect how the light is in the sun position. Okay, now it shows up here, the, the photomontage window. And you can see here, uh, it is, it's rendering a horizon line based on the elevation data I have added. And if you drag around with the mouse down here, you can see the horizon line is changing. I know, I can see here that this is the center of the photo. It's a little to the right of the center of the roundabout. So the photo should, the, uh, the camera should point something like this. Good, but now the, the most important thing when working with photo montages is, is to calibrate the camera correctly, which means you, you need to make sure that you added the camera at the correct position and it's pointing in the correct direction and you have the correct focal length. I know that the focal length is, uh, is right, but I don't know about uh, the other things. I know I took it from just about somewhere down here. But the way I can find out now is by adding control points. And uh, for instance, if I zoom in here, I can see that there's a light pole standing here that I think I can find up here in the photo as well, for instance. I'll, I'll just take that one as a starter. I'm gonna add a lot of control points, so I'll put them on a separate layer. And you can see the shadow of the uh, light pole and the way it ends is where the light pole stands. So I'll click here and then uh, you can see the control point up here somewhere. Actually, I cannot see it right now, but it certainly is not where that light pole is here in the photo. And that is where it should be if the camera is uh, calibrated correctly. So I'm going to right click down here and saying, Point, uh, point out position on picture. I'm gonna click here. Oh, there you can see the, the, the object is down here. So now I can actually, I can change the way, the direction of the camera by holding the control key down and dragging here the photo. So, so now I change the direction of uh, my camera down here so it it puts the control point in the correct position. But still, I don't know if uh, the position where the, the camera is added here is correct. You can see if I move it, uh, the, the control point is moving as well. But I have to add some more control points uh, to make sure that this position is correct also. So, and, and the, the good, a good thing is to, to spread out the control points as much as possible on a photo. And in this case, I have as many uh, control points um, as, as I like. There's so many things here I can find on the map. But first, I would like to add a control point here at this light pole because it's come very much in the, another uh, position on the photo, in the opposite position, more or less. And I can see this light pole is standing right here. So I'm going to click here and here. Okay, I'm gonna right click here, 
point out position picture and okay so you can see that it's not the, in the right place so of course I could I could again use the control key hold that down and drag here and move that up and then the other one is going in the wrong place so that is because the that I don't have the camera at the right position so you can see if I start to drag that one I could perhaps find a better place something like this is a little tricky something like this and then hold the control key down and drag that one down so th that was uh, that was better I think but uh, I'm, I'm not sure yet that if it's correct I have a, a, a feature here that can do this uh, optimization uh, automatically but I like to add some more control points first so I'm gonna add one for um, say this light pole here you can see it showed up a little off it should be, have been there I, I'm going to add my object here at this roundabout so I I'm going to put a control point there too right here in the center so I would say that is the most important one it should have been there and then perhaps this uh, sign up here can add that one right there. I'm zooming in and clicking, yeah, something like that. And perhaps I should have one over here, but then it's a little tricky to see which pole it is. So the one, two. Three. I'm gonna add one and number three. One, two, three. That's right here in front of the bus or whatever it is. Okay. Good. So now I'm going to run this uh, auto optimization uh, feature here. And now it's going to ask me what I would like to optimize. And I'd like to optimize the pan and tilt, which is the direction of the camera. Uh, the camera might have been rotated a little bit. Not the focal length, but the camera position I would like to optimize also. So normally I would, um, I, quite often, uh, I would know the camera position very uh, uh, accurately, but, but in, in, not in this case. And sometimes when you run this feature, um, it can go terribly wrong and it can really uh, go completely nuts. So, and, and, and I would normally recommend to first run some of the, fe some of the features from this section and, and then this one and, and eventually maybe uh, uh, try to run all of them afterwards. But in this case, I think that uh, I'll just try with all of these except the focal length. So now it's trying and trying and trying to, to make it better. And you can see this, uh, the deviation here is actually the distance from the control points to where we pointed out they should be uh, in pixels. And that is the sum of all uh, the control points that all in all has uh, 93 pixels uh, off. And you can see it's working, working, and it, this is not getting any smaller, so I can just as well just stop it now. Well, now it's stopped automatically. So now it's gonna ask everyone to keep the changes. And and I can see here the, the control, control points is pretty much where I would expect them to be, so I say yes. Yeah, if you look at all these control points, it looks pretty nice. Um, I have this uh, horizon line out here 
uh, which is based on the elevation data I added and you can see um, it's, it's not uh, to be trusted here because I didn't add elevation data for more than uh, one kilometer so I'm just gonna disable this in Denmark uh, the horizon line is often not that uh, good for calibrating the camera but if you have mountains or something like that uh, then it should follow the mountains if you have enough elevation data and that uh, is very useful I'm just gonna hide it now so and it looks like the camera is still uh, in the area area where I expected it to be so good now I can uh, turn off the control points and now I can start to add whatever I like here in this uh, uh, photo montage now I have it calibrated and I'm ready to to go on I'm just going to save my project and um, of course I could add a, a for instance a wind turbine that is what we normally do I can say I want to add one here uh, yeah um, it, it, it should be 132 I think normally but I'm just gonna make a, a really small one. I think it's gonna be looking quite ridiculous, but let's just see. It shows up in, in the right spot right out here. And um, yeah, it's got the dimensions that uh, we expect. I'm just gonna delete that again. Okay. Okay, now I have uh, calibrated the camera and I want to put in a 3D object here in the roundabout. So I'm going to the internet, I'm going to the 3D warehouse.sketchup.com where you can find all sorts of uh, 3D models. And uh, all these can be imported into SketchUp or into SketchUp Make. And SketchUp Make is uh, free for elevation, evaluation purposes. Um, as, and as you can see here, you can find uh, a lot of uh, strange things. I'm going to search for a solar panel. And then uh, you can see the different models shows up here. If you click on them, you can see some information about them. You can uh, rotate them here and see how they look. And this is a very important thing here, the number of polygons. And that should not be too big uh, a number. Uh, I would say at least it should be below 100,000. Uh, if they are bigger than that, then uh, don't take them into WinPro. That would be painfully slow to work with. Or, um, or at least then you, sh you should try to reduce them if you can in, in SketchUp. So I found this model here. Actually, the number of polygons here is, is a little... Uh, a little bigger than I, I would prefer but I'm only using this solar panel object here so it's it's working quite uh, okay in WinPro so I'm downloading this model and I'm just opening it in SketchUp and the file is uh, read only for some reason doesn't matter. So now I can actually just click on this one uh, and say export 3D model and I want to put the model into my demo folder. I'll create a new folder called DAE and I want to make sure that the option says that I am triangulating all faces and I'm exporting only the part that I selected and I'm exporting the texture, texture maps too. So okay, and export. So now back in WinPro, I'll create a new layer for my 3D object. And I'm going to add 3D object right here. Select the AE file and then select the object. And then I'm going to make it really ridiculously big. Like this. 
now WinPro has to convert uh, the model to, to WinPro format so it can work with it. And now you can see it shows up here, um, not at where I put the object in. You can see it's somewhere up there. And that is because um, if I show uh, the core axis here, you can see that this one is not at the center. And if I right click on the axis and reset them, which is a good idea to do that before you export, um, you can see it is the green axis is um, pointing north, so that is why it's positioned up here. So if I just move this one down, to the, to the center of the coordinate system and export it again. And overwrite the one I made before. Then WinPro would soon detect that something happened. Now it did. Okay, so uh, if I turn on the symbol layer, you can see that it is in the right position. I'll try to render it. Okay, it looks a little too dark. I'll just go into the manual light here and change to advanced light and turn up the ambient light a bit, something like that, and apply. Okay, that looked a bit better. So now you can see that uh, this light pole here should be in front and not behind. And also I think it looks a bit strange that the concrete is going out here almost out to the asphalt. So I'm just going to use the rubber tool and then I'm going to zoom in here and then I'm erasing by left clicking and uh, then I'm just right clicking here and doing like this and also I think I'll just get rid of this and this something like this perhaps here a little bit and then I'm going to say don't show the rubber Okay, so actually this looks quite good, but as you can see, we have a problem with the 3D model that for some reason this uh, panel up here to the, at the left corner is showing up differently. So now I can either just um, say that uh, I don't care about that, <laughs> or I can, could find another model, of course, uh, or I can try and go and edit the model and find out what is uh, wrong with this one. So um, I will do the, the, the later thing here. And I just, since I spent some time and uh, know my way around in SketchUp, I found out why. And uh, i never seen that problem before, but the reason is that for some odd reason, uh, the designer of this object has decided to add uh, a, tr uh, a semi-transparent layer on top of each of these uh, solar panels here. So that that is not a common problem, but uh, you can see it if I move this uh, panel a little to the left and click here, you can see uh, some polygon is showing up here and that is uh, a, a semi-transparent layer uh, and, and that doesn't look good in WinPro. So I delete that one and then I move this one back. And I'm just going out of all these components again, selecting the object and export it again. Uh, 
and replacing this one and going back to WinPro. Okay, I'll just try to render again. Uh, that looks a lot better. <coughs> okay, so um, that's about it, I think. I uh, hope that uh, you found the demo useful. Bye bye for now.